A uh, 28-year-old female was, uh, patient was referred to us for the favor of EUS SOS endotherapy for recurrent acute pancreatitis leading to chronic pancreatitis. Uh, this patient has undergone an attempt of endotherapy elsewhere uh, some time ago um, and then continued to have symptoms. So you can see on endoscopic ultrasound uh, multiple stones uh, large stones with pancreatic duct dilatation in the head region. Uh, these are bright uh, echogenic uh, calculi with posterior acoustic shadowing uh, filling the duct. Uh, this is not parental chimal calcification and looks like these stones are probably in the accessory duct. We are trying to evaluate uh, the, the pancreatic ductal anatomy. You can see a pancreatic duct now coming at uh, in the head region from the genu, and it does not appear dilated. So this tells me that the predominant draining duct of the body and the tail is not dilated, and there are a lot of stones sitting here. Most likely, it will be in the accessory duct of the pancreas. So there could be some amount of uh, ductal anomaly in terms of maybe incomplete divisum where uh, uh, there is a lot of stasis and uh, formation of stones in the accessory duct. And uh, we can uh, have this information that there is no parenchymal calcification in the head region. This is what I call the pancreas mapping on endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, it gives you a fair amount of an idea whether this patient will benefit with endotherapy or if there is extensive parenchymal calcification, then you can see there is a Y bifurcation of the duct here. There is a Y bifur bifurcation. This gives me an indication that there is definite communication of the accessory duct, the dorsal and ventral duct. And uh, this is probably the reason why this patient has problems. Uh, gallbladder is essentially clean. So biliary pancreatitis is ruled out. And now we are seeing the pancreatic body from the stomach. You see the portosplenic confluence. And uh, there was no parenchymal calcification. So as you can see here, that patient has undergone an attempt of endotherapy through the major papilla in the past. And therefore, you could see a little bit of uh, uh, sphincterotomy here. So what we are going to do now, we'll try and cannulate the pancreatic duct through the major papilla. That's what we are trying to do. Uh, once you get in face to the ampulla, uh, we'll cannulate the pancreatic duct. And uh, let's try and see if we can obtain a pancreatogram. And uh, we are able to see some amount of pancreatic duct with uh, stricturing. So whenever we have patients with sphincterotomy, especially biliary sphincterotomy, sometimes uh, pancreatic ductal cannulation can become a serious challenge. And you can see here that you are seeing essentially the whole duct lining up. There is some communication with the accessory duct, you can see here. And uh, now we are cannulating from the minor papilla, you can see here. There's a major papilla cannulation. You saw earlier from the minor papilla the duct going down. And uh, we will try and now cannulate uh, the major papilla with the guide wire. So it is our standard practice that uh, we try and uh, cannulate with uh, Terumo. Uh, and I prefer to use cannula in such situation. Uh, you can see that I'm trying to get into the major papilla and I'm going constantly into the duct where there are a lot of stones there. And uh, it's not easy for us to maneuver through those stones. Uh, our guide wire is in that something called accessory duct which we saw. There is a pancreas divisum for sure. Uh, we are obtaining a cholangiogram, a pancreatogram, sorry, and uh, there is some communication. That's why the duct is filling up. When I inject contrast through the major papilla, you can see here on, on pancreatogram. 
So what we are doing now, we are leaving a stiffer guide wire in that portion of duct with uh, uh, stones and we will try and see whether we can uh, do some clearance of that. You can see some concrements coming out. Uh, at this stage, uh, you can see that previous endotherapy attempt was only a biliary sphincterotomy and uh, I personally reckon that uh, the pancreatic uh, sphincterotomy was not performed at that time wherever it was tried. So now we are cannulating uh, over the guide wire with a sphincter tome and what we are doing is a major papillar sphincterotomy, my pancreatic sphincterotomy. Yes, there was no pancreatic sphincterotomy pre in the previous endotherapy attempt. Probably uh, they just managed to get the bile duct and did the biliary sphincterotomy. So now we have done a major papillar pancreatic sphincterotomy and we will try and pass a dormia, a small dormia basket by the side of the guide wire if we can take out few stones and that's exactly what we need to try. You can see the bile flowing from the biliary sphincterotomy very easily. Uh, I'm putting, I prefer to put dormia basket by the side of the guide wire. It gives me some guidance on fluoroscopy, whether we are in the right uh, duct or we are going in the side branches. So this is a standard practice at our unit. Once we are in the main duct, we remove the our guide wire. And now I know that I am in the accessory duct which is loaded with stones. We are jiggling the dormia on fluoroscopy as you can see here and we'll try and clear part of the stone load uh, from the pancreatic duct in the accessory duct. So some concrements did come out. Uh, what we feel is this patient will need uh, some kind of a formal uh, ESWL. Uh, we are passing the dormia now again and trying to clear. You can see a large uh, radio opaque stone between this duct and uh, the main pancreatic duct from the minor papilla. So this patient will definitely need endotherapy. Now we are going after the minor papilla. You can see here uh, there is some concrements trying to exude out of the minor papilla. And uh, uh, it's our practice that once we dislodge that concrement, we'll try and cannulate with the guide wire and a cannula. Uh, it's a standard practice. You can see I am cannulating the pancreatic duct uh, through the minor papilla in a big loop position. You must see on the fluoroscopy that I made a big loop in the stomach in order to get proper access uh, and access both uh, for uh, stable intervention through the minor papilla into the pancreatic duct. So once we are in the pancreatic duct, we'll obtain a pancreatogram and you can see that communication there. And you can see how complicated is the anatomy there of the pancreatic duct and therefore uh, leaving a small stent through the minor papilla into the MPD will obviate uh, uh, the need to do major intervention for the duct and this will ensure effective ductal decompression. So what we are doing is we are leaving a guide wire in after exchanging the terumo with a stiffer wire on fluoroscopy. Uh, we will then proceed with a formal minor papilla sphincterotomy. As you can see here, we have done major papilla sphincterotomy. We are now cannulating this with a sphincter tome and a very controlled manner we can perform minor papilla sphincterotomy. The vision should be clear, a very short burst of energy endocut we use. We use the same setting what I use for biliary sphincterotomy uh, for the minor papilla sphincterotomy. So the full minor papilla sphincterotomy is achieved and uh, we need to leave a small stent for a while uh, for effective ductal decompression. Now this patient will definitely require an ESWL session which will call this patient after six weeks. The stent is in place, major and minor papillary sphincterotomy are done and this should have uh, patient asymptomatic. 